Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Meher. I am from Armenia. Uh, I am Wikipedia from 2008. Uh, and uh, you listened to uh, part of speech uh, on previous uh, speech uh, on Spanish. Uh, I, am, I will speak on Armenian, okay? Uh, no, no, it's a joke. <laughs> no. Uh, I want uh, to talk about the uh, uh, creation aspect of our wiki uh, education in Armenia, yes. Uh, it's a, a project, uh, Ar 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 Armenian project, uh, it's finding participants and uh, not uh, los losing them. Uh, the success of only education project is not only uh, attaching the participants, but also uh, encouraging uh, their uh, contribute involvement. After. Uh, in uh, Wikimedia Armenia, uh, we work with uh, uh, some peoples, and uh, sometimes it is uh, the case uh, it wiki editing. A serious question arises to where is find these participants. Uh, and uh, in the uh, Wikipedia Armenia, we have uh, three uh, part of peoples. Uh, with, with whom we're working, it's uh, the schools, universities, and uh, some uh, pro uh, project uh, science or organization. Uh, schools of have uh, dedicated uh, teachers when are uh, eager to explore the, with the students new educational opportunities by uh, uh, particip participating with schools. We have uh, leverage uh, exciting in infrastructure infrastructure, such as uh, classrooms, uh, sailings, and uh, uh, resources. Engaging high school students uh, offers the opportunity to uh, cultivate a position of knowledge and uh, contributes to a meaningful project in an early age. This can help uh, foster listening, interest in learning and uh, collaboration. Uh, we have uh, some projects, Armenian projects uh, with schools. Uh, we have uh, uh, in our region, at first, we have uh, wiki clubs. Uh, we have we're working with wiki clubs. They are gathering in schools in Maine. And now working uh, seven schools in Armenia, uh, seven wiki clubs. Uh, we're working with universities and uh, several uh, source of participants for uh, educating programs. Uh, University students often uh, possess a higher level of uh, knowledge and uh, experience in special subjects, which can be uh, val valuable for uh, con contributing in project Wikipedia. Uh, they have access in uh, academic resources and uh, may uh, already uh, familiar with uh, research and writing uh, in in techniques. Uh, engaging, uh, we working with uh, university, and we have uh, two universities, big universities in Armenia. It's a uh, uh, university uh, of uh, our, uh, its mother university in Armenia. Uh, we have a branch in Ijevan, and they bring uh, many students uh, and uh, part of uh, our other university uh, language in university is have uh, practice in Armenia. Uh, fourth year, yes, four year, they are uh, practicing in Armenia and working uh, 60, near 60 students. Uh, they are translating from the different language to Armenian uh, and uh, editing articles in uh, Wikipedia, Ar uh, Wikipedia Armenia. Uh, they, and they are uh, working uh, and they have practice. Okay, finish, finish, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Elvin. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I just want to teach you another word for saying, how are you? So, Imainalian. Again, Imainalian. 
allowing me. So I asked, how are you? I said, good, fine, great. Okay, uh, why is Quechua important nowadays? I think uh, if uh, we go to the statistics, Quechua is, uh, is spoken by around 10 million people around South America and more even in, in, also more people are learning the language in Europe and United States as well. So it's important, but some people would say, okay, it's a large language, uh, a language that is spoken by a large community. However, it's in recession. It doesn't seem like that, but it's important to, to be aware of that, that children or kids are not speaking anymore uh, Quechua language. So what we are doing here is uh, bring this aware and how we can, why we are doing this, because it's important for me, for my community, and also for the world, because we are more inclusive and more diverse if we are all together on the web, unreal, so this is important. And what we are doing is basically fostering the listening, speaking, writing, and reading in Quechua by bringing Wikimedia projects to the Andes. So uh, how we are doing this? Uh, you already know that I'm running the Reading Wikipedia in the Classroom program. However, this is not the only program that I'm doing. So I'm also uh, enforcing, for example, the um, Wikisource for writing, uh, Lingua Libre for, re for listening the language in Quechua. Also, we are developing more, more knowledge bases for expert people that can, uh, could, that, that could um, for example, use the data. So we are democratizing contributions based on a contributor's needs, ability, or skills. So we propose an innovative space where we store all our courses, tutorials, workshops, and so on, and we document all these processes and we are storing in a e-learning platform. And with this, regarding to Wiki, EduWiki 2023, was I would say, uh, for doing pedagogy, we need new approaches. And that's why we are here, because we are contributing not only to the present, we are shaping the future by uh, making a uh, better education for all. Thank you. Okay, Hernan. It's my first day. No, it's not nice. In Serbia, we don't have silent letter. Okay, well, hello, um, I'm Hernan from Wikimedia Colombia, and today I'm going to talk to you about the Chimera Network and the YU people appropriating the Wikimedia in an offline context. And I wanted to start with the question, what if there was a way to access the human knowledge in an offline context? Some may be wondering, why am I talking about offline context? They're still out there in 2023, a very large offline world. Recent data from Colombia talks about 1,710 towns out of the electrical network. This means there is no electricity at all. And guess who lives there? Rural communities, Afro-Colombian communities, and almost all the indigenous communities. And within these indigenous communities, there is this nation without borders, which is the YU nation that shares like this political border between Colombia and Venezuela, but they also share their culture and their language. And of course, between this community, we have activists, Wikimedia acti activists. We have the Wikimediaistas in Wayunaiki, which wanted to bring their oral tradition into writing tradition, starting with the Wiktionary. And then now, 2023, they have the public Wikipedia in Wayunaiki, indigenous language, which we are very proud of them. And next to that, there was a powerful alliance cooking, which was the Wikimedia Colombia with the Charisma Foundation, with the project Chimera, which is basically a network that hosts the full Spanish Wikipedia offline, but now also hosts the Wikipedia in Wayunaiki and several resources from full libraries, learning modules, fact-checking kit, and more adapted content. content. And this was a solution for a problem that uh, the Wikipedia in Wayunaiki had because they already had a place to store the, the, their knowledge to even upload their content and describe them in their own language, as you can see. But now also they have like this network that they can personalize, upload their content, uh, create folders for their teachers and their students to put their homeworks. 
So how it works, basically, with an USB, you drag and drop two folders, you share the network with the phone, everyone connects to this phone and can access this uh, full Wikipedia, use and create content for them. And I wanted to finish with the, Wiki, the, the Wikipedia and why Unike people telling you why they have a Wikipedia and why Unike. I hope this... Uh, it says we uh, have permission to watch, but you can... Well, I'll send it on the, on the Telegram. And well, that's it. Okay. Thank you. And now I'll ask Jackie to... Okay, you're here. Thank you. Yeah, here. Oh, okay, that's easier. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Here. Well, I want to tell you about what's beyond the beginning. That's the question we are wondering now. After, uh, and we want to trace enduring effects of this online wiki course we created at Universidad. Oh, here. Uh, uh, we created this online course at Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, and now we are wondering what's beyond the beginning. This course, we were very proud. We work in alliance with Wikimedia Mexico, and they are a wonderful community, so they help us to make wonderful videos, creating content, and so we use a Moodle platform to do this. It's an internal course for our teachers for a professional development certification. So we, we were very proud, but after four rounds of this course, we wonder, and what are they doing after the course, no? What are they doing, these teachers? We just give them the certificate and bye-bye. So now, what we are doing, oh, sorry. <laughs> what we are doing now is interviewing them. We send them a, a survey asking, what are you doing after the course? What changed? And they are saying so interesting things. We are doing this for, uh, with a twofold uh, objective. Uh, the first is uh, having testimonies in an official page of the university. And that gives so much proud to the teachers to be featured in this space. And the other thing is showing others, of course, uh, what projects have been done in the university in several levels, uh, K-12, uh, graduated school, post-graduated school, or libraries also. So this gives us a variety. It's an entry of a blog page and then uh, the video interview, asking them uh, uh, what are they doing. And one thing that we are finding very interesting is they do projects in pairs or in three. They go after the course, get an accomplice in their schools and say, let's do this and, and, in two or in pairs. So that's what we are finding out uh, from these interviews. And one thing I want to remark is that two of these teachers also published a, an article in this book we are uh, presenting all over Mexico uh, that has a lot of stories uh, written by the teachers who made these projects and you can download it in the in the link uh, yellow link uh, up there and none of this will be possible without this alliance I want to present you the staff of Wikimedia Mexico Alex Reyes uh, Isa Marcerón they are responsible for the wonderful project uh, that we can do at, in this large university some, it's a macro university UNAM and uh, with their help we can provide uh, workshops and support to the teachers who want to continue doing something after this work. So this is a working project and we want to uh, keep knowing what's beyond the beginning and we'll let you know pretty soon. Thank you so much. for being here. Today I'm going to talk about Hi everyone, thanks for being here. Today I'm going to talk about how Wiki Education supports 12,000 new editors a year. And I'm going to focus specifically on the student editor part of our program. 
In order to do this, we rely very heavily on the Wiki Education dashboard, which is a customized version of the Programs and Events dashboard. And there are a couple key features enabled here. One of these is the timeline, which we rely heavily on, and the other is the Get Help button. Each class creates a course page on the dashboard and creates a timeline. The timeline has embedded assignments that are um, designed to go through week by week. They'll uh, direct the students to training modules and to various ex exercises along the way. So the training modules teach them about Wikipedia, how to edit, how to interact with the community, how to cite, these kinds of things. The assignments scaffold them through the process of writing, breaks it down into a bibliography assignment, beginning your draft, expanding your draft, and finally um, moving your work to main space. The, I rely heavily on the My Dashboard feature, which lets me see which classes have been recently active, which ones have added a lot of words. So this allows me to keep an eye on what they're doing. The, within the course page, there's an articles tab, which shows every article that the students have worked on. And when you go to the students tab, you can see each student, what they've been assigned, um, how much they've added in their sandbox versus in main space. And when you click on the student's username here, this brings you to an additional set of tools where you can see um, a lot more of what they've done, including, importantly, the article viewer, which for languages that it works, lets you see specifically what the students have added, have added to the current version of the article. Um, this makes it possible to keep track of a huge number of students, importantly, with community support. Thank you for joining me today, and I appreciate your time. I hope this is useful. And the last, uh, last certainly not the least. Yeah. Uh, presentation is uh, by Florencia. Well, I should say I should say sorry for my English. I have a paper here because my English is not very good, so I need to read it. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, well, I'm Florencia from Wikimedia Spain, and I've worked a lot with um, universities and Wikipedia. This project was created to involve university students in the editing of Wikipedia and with the improvement of science articles in Spanish, because Spanish Wikipedia has not very nice or very good articles about uh, science. The background and who we have been inspired by is mainly the work of the Basque Wikimedian and Wikipuentes, a project from Wikimedia Argentina. And um, the first year about Club Wikipedia, uh, we have an itinerant Wikipedian. It was a guy going from one university to another, teaching. I'm nervous. <laughs> You're doing great. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you. So. Uh, we, we had an itinerant Wikipedian, that it was a guy going from one university to another, explaining how to edit Wikipedia to the students and their teachers, explain how to do it uh, with quality, right? So um, that was a very nice experience, but when we started the second year, we saw that this was not sustainable because we cannot send the same itinerant Wikipedia to the same teachers for new students. It was so we, we started thinking what we could do and we, we discovered that at least in Spain and I hope everywhere, <laughs> Uh, we have, um, in, the, in the universities, we have an Office of Scientific Culture and Innovation Office. 
um, which is in charge of connecting professors with the public and tell people what is being done inside university. Uh, it seeks to promote scientific vocations. This office tends to know uh, who are the most enthusiastic teachers at university and they know uh, the people that want to try new things. And that was the, the key of everything. Uh, we talk with this um, office and they, they search for us the enthusiastic, oh, the enthusiastic, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, so they, they search for us, the enthusiastic teachers, and um, this is the comparison between having enthusiastic teachers that they decided to learn how to edit Wikipedia and from Wikimedia Spain, they explain, we explain them how to teach how to, uh, and how to use Wikipedia. So um, the difference between the, the two experiments or the two itineraries was that in the second one, we have less articles, but much more quality, really very good quality and very uh, enthusiastic teachers that want to repeat it. So um, here you have a poster that explains in, in a better English than mine everything we've done. And if, just in case you want to ask something, I, I will be over there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we have some time for questions before our next and final session for today. Do we have questions for the speakers from the lightning talks? Okay, turn on. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll do that. It, it, we can fix it. I don't know what's going on. Even is it cold or, or uh, hot? I don't know. It's not it's turned off okay, it's turned off right now, but we will make a good temperature somehow. <laughs> okay, uh, any questions? Okay, think. Uh -huh. Not a question, but maybe an invitation. Tomorrow I have a, um, also a talk about more specific details about the implementation of reading Wikipedia in the classroom in, in Peru. So you are all invited. So we will also learn new words in Quechua. So you are very welcome. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, okay, I have a tiny question for Florencia. Uh, so what was, if I can ask you, <laughs> uh, what was, uh, so you said you compared two of them different. One was more quality, one was more quantity. Uh, did you decide which one to use better? Like, do are you more into quality articles? Because we were also uh, questioning what is the point, like having students uh, uh, write so many articles or is it to have them stay and write better ones or so what was what was your idea i i prefer more quality articles right because with the data tones and contents we have quantity so if we have a group of teachers uh, university level they really can um write and, re and make a research before making an article. So we have to aprovechar eso. <laughs> so we, we prefer, in this program, we prefer quality. And also because we are very small and we don't want to teach every day the same. So <laughs> we prefer to teach someone that makes the, the speech, right? Is there any other question? Okay. Ivana, you have the word. Yeah, so thanks everyone. Uh, we will have the next session um, in three or four minutes.